I didn't mean to hurt you. Emily, please don't hate me. The junior at my company who stole my fiancé said this without even apologizing. A year later, she came from another department to see me off when I was leaving the company. It's been a year and you still have feelings for him, huh? Are you so shocked that you quit your job? As the junior said this with a smirk, my colleagues burst out laughing. You didn't know why I was quitting. Embarrassed and angry, the junior's face turned red. My name is Emily. I work in sales at an ID company, hustling every day. I turned 31 this year, just an average employee. I've been working at this company for five years and have always been able to handle everything effortlessly. Even now, I'm still appreciated for being efficient at my job. I'm fairly popular among my colleagues and have managed my relationships well. And at this company, I met the love of my life and got engaged. My life hasn't been dramatic, but I've always considered it a stable and happy one. Emily, I don't understand this. Lately, my non-dramatic life has been troubled by this junior. Katrina, I told you about it yesterday. But I can't do it somehow. Please do it for me, Emily. Katrina was a new employee just this year. While it's good that I was assigned as her trainer, she unfortunately has a poor memory. I thought office work would be easier. I haven't done anything too challenging before. Yeah, that's all right. It's all new for the newcomers, isn't it? Let's learn little by little. Three months after I first comforted her. How many times have I heard the phrase, I just can't do it. You're young and cute. A line I was told over and over when I was a new employee. Katrina is indeed cute and the youngest in our department. She's also very friendly and all the male employees are smitten with her. That's fine. Being personable is good. And as a teacher, I prefer a cheerful attitude. But that's a separate issue from her work ethic. Katrina, at least try to take notes. If you don't understand something, it's okay to ask. I don't bring anything to write on. It wasn't on the list of things to bring. And if I don't understand, I can just ask, right? It feels like I'm dealing with an elementary school student. Well, maybe kids today don't take notes. When will I be freed from this newcomer? No matter how patiently I teach, it's pointless if she doesn't have the will to learn. My fiancé, Daniel, works in another department of the same company. We live together, so our conversations on the way home are often about my troubles with Katrina. Emily is serious, huh? I could never teach someone. Patience just isn't my thing. I think anyone would need a lot of patience to teach Katrina. My voice must have sounded particularly tired because Daniel laughed and stroked my head. I'll cook dinner tonight, so cheer up. He may be indecisive and unreliable at times, but after listening to my troubles, he always gently pats my head. After complaining about her to Daniel, I felt I'd do my best tomorrow. Having a steadfast ally is a comforting thought, one that I realize every day. I thought that with Daniel, we could be happy through any changes in life. I just heard from the manager. Are you dating Daniel? One morning, as I arrived at work, Katrina suddenly asked me this. I guess I'll need to have a serious talk with the manager about handling personal information. Lucky you, Daniel is like the sales ace, right? I was thinking, if I were to date someone in this company, Daniel would be my top choice. She can't distinguish between what to say and what not to say. Would anyone talk about the possibility of dating someone right in front of their current partner? The discomfort I felt only grew with her next words. Did she notice the puzzled look on my face? Katarina smirked and said, What's wrong, Emily? You look scared. Are you thinking I might steal Daniel from you? Too surprised to utter a sound, she must have taken my silence as agreement. Her grin grew even wider. 
Just because I'm young and cute, don't be wary of me. I wouldn't do something so unreasonable. I already felt a lot of her insanity, but now her insanity seems to be beyond my limits. And although her attitude towards work is still negative, the usually unhelpful Katrina asked, Emily, could you please explain this part to me? I was briefly moved by this sudden enthusiasm. However, that moment was short-lived as she quickly reverted to her usual self, saying, This is too hard for me. Can you do it, Emily? I'm going to the restroom. And left her seat. What was that all about? I felt foolish for even being momentarily impressed. When will I be free from this newcomer? The ride home with Daniel was usual, but today he seemed different. Hey, don't be so hard on her. Emily, you're a bit too serious. She's probably just nervous because she's new. Maybe a more relaxed approach would make it easier for her to ask questions. He said this with a bit of exasperation after I had complained about Katrina. I didn't expect Daniel to chide me, and I couldn't find an immediate response. Only managing a wry smile and a reluctant you're right. But the chiding was just for that moment. Once we got home, everything was back to normal. Maybe I complained too much. It must be depressing to hear it every day. I'll try to stop complaining. Daniel must have been tired and fed up with my constant complaints. I can't just rely on him every day. I need to support Daniel too. A few days later, when work had calmed down, I decided to cook dinner. I got ahead with my work from the morning, looked after Katrina as usual, and left for home feeling upbeat at the end of the work day. I had told Daniel that I would be getting home before him to prepare dinner. I will make his favorite meatloaf tonight, and he seemed really pleased, so he might come home early. After shopping and getting home, I finished the prep cooking and noticed a message on my phone. It's from Daniel. What could it be? Even before opening it, I had a bad feeling, which turned out to be right. The message said I had to work late unexpectedly. Apparently he's going to eat out, so we'll leave tonight's meatloaf for another day. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed, but it was work, so it couldn't be helped. Since I had already spent time making the meatloaf, I decided to save it for tomorrow night's dinner and order takeout for myself tonight. I wondered if it was a sudden call from a client. Overtime is common in his department, but sudden overtime is very rare. I thought I would make him a late night snack when he returned. However, Daniel didn't come home that night. It was very late, so I called him but couldn't get through. And even though I sent a message before going to bed, it was unread by morning. What should I do? Did something happen? An all-nighter at the office. Worried he might have fallen ill or something, I hurried and got ready a bit earlier than usual to go to the office. At the entrance of the company, I spotted a colleague from Daniel's apartment and rushed over. He looked puzzled when I asked if it had been busy yesterday. Daniel didn't come home. He said he had work, but... A client project, maybe. He left the office around the same time as me around 6 p.m. Should we check? Seeing my anxious face, the colleague suggested checking the attendance management system, but if even he felt it was unlikely Daniel was working late, I shouldn't drag him into this further. I gratefully declined and decided to quietly head to my desk for now. Sitting at my desk, I took a deep breath. The situation was starting to look grim. If he wasn't working, it meant he stayed out all night. Daniel never came home without notice before, so I wondered what he was up to. I noticed he had finally read my message, but there was no reply. Good morning. Oh, Emily, you're early today. What's up? Katrina greeted me at my desk, and I felt something off about her, but couldn't pinpoint what it was. Given her usual behavior, 
Perhaps it wasn't surprising. I've got something on my mind. You're really serious, and you? That's when I realized what felt off. Katrina was wearing the same clothes as yesterday. My intuition was kicking in, the kind I desperately hoped would be wrong. I wished it was just a coincidence, but I knew from experience that such gut feelings rarely turn out to be mistaken. As if to prove my intuition right, Daniel called me after work to meet at a cafe near the office, where I found him and Katrina waiting for me together. Emily, I thought you were a decent person. I've heard everything from Katrina. I'm glad I saw the truth before we get married. In front of me, the words aimed at me sounded distant, like from another world. It's not like that, Emily. Daniel is not at fault. I just wanted to get along with you and consulted Daniel about you. He was very understanding. What exactly is not like that? Katrina, when tearful eyes and her hand on Daniel's arm, must have appeared young and innocent to anyone looking. And Daniel, not entirely displeased by this. Why did they call me here? Seeing him appear with Katrina in tow, I could guess what was coming though I desperately hoped I was wrong. Emily, you were harsh on Katrina, weren't you? Being too serious can come off as power harassment, you know. That's quite a way to put it, but what are you basing that on? I admit I've had my hands full with Katrina, but I don't recall ever treating her harshly. As I began to speak, Katrina hid behind Daniel as if she were frightened. I've seen how you two interact, Emily. You always complain to me about Katrina not being proactive at work, but I've seen her ask questions and work properly. It clicked. Katrina had shown sudden enthusiasm in asking questions when Daniel was around. Daniel, it's not Emily's fault. I'm the one who can't grasp the work, causing trouble. No, it's better I say this for Emily's sake too. If a new person joins and goes through the same thing, it wouldn't be right. Watching this farce unfold, I was overwhelmed with doubt and disappointment in Daniel. I didn't know what Katrina had told him, but his readiness to condemn me, his fiancé of three years, based on the words of someone he barely knew, was more disappointing than I expected. Was he always this narrow-minded? Emily, let's break up. I think it's difficult to live with someone I can't respect as a person. Yeah, I think so too. I blurted out an immediate response, and Daniel looked surprised. By the time he called me out, I had already braced myself for a breakup. While it wasn't devoid of sadness, the farce I had just witnessed had cooled my feelings considerably. Emily, it wasn't intentional. Please don't hate me. She said from behind Daniel's arm, her face twisting into a sneer I didn't miss. Regardless, I wouldn't react, and life would continue as usual. Heading home alone, and spending time there, I felt a surge of melancholy, but I knew dwelling on it would mean defeat. The next day, as soon as I arrived at work, I was called in by the manager. It seemed that news of a broken engagement had spread. Though I had always found the manager to lack delicacy, he offered to reassign the training role to someone else. That meant the details about Katrina being the other party must also be widely known. It felt too soon, but I decided to just go with the flow. I accepted the offer, focusing on my work. The person assigned in my place was the senior who had trained me when I was new. Though I had stepped away from training Katrina, my team was very close-knit, and the atmosphere remained comfortable. They treated me as usual, not dwelling more than necessary on the recent broken engagement. The new project was quite significant, and upon handing it over, my senior told me, I'm counting on you. Returning to the front line after a while, I struggled to keep up with the intense workload, but it reaffirmed my belief that it was indeed a fulfilling place to work. The busy life of coming home, having dinner, taking a shower, 
and collapsing into sleep distracted me from the slight loneliness of Daniel's absence. By the time we celebrated the project's success, the wound of the broken engagement felt almost non-existent. After the project concluded, I was surprised to be offered a promotion, which I gratefully accepted. The promotion was supported by the senior who had mentored me, and lately, listening to my grievances about Katrina after work had become a routine. I hadn't noticed while I was her trainer, but Katrina was popular among the male employees. However, on the other hand, she seemed to have a poor rapport with female employees, and combined with her attitude towards work, her reputation wasn't very good. Young women inevitably attract attention, and when someone uses it to their advantage, varying opinions are bound to arise. But I hope she could find a better weapon than youth. As time went on, I expanded my role, and quickly a year passed, finding more fulfillment in my work than ever. Everyone noticed my increased engagement at work, so they were surprised when I greeted them with my resignation. The manager, whom I had thought lacked tact, expressed significant regret over my resignation, but I realized that he actually considered his employees. On my last day of work, just before leaving, teammates from the project that led to my promotion came to see me off with a bouquet of flowers. Though we are now on different teams, we still maintain our friendship and go out for drinks regularly. Creating such unbreakable bonds is truly valuable, a sentiment that deeply resonated with me, especially after the broken engagement. Emily, I'm going to miss you. Why didn't you tell me about your resignation earlier? As we were enjoying a warm and friendly atmosphere, an uninvited guest made an appearance. Everyone clearly had a why are you here expression on their faces. The other day at the morning meeting, the manager informed us. The senior smiled and gave Katrina a pointed warning. I've wanted to apologize to you for so long after what happened. I instinctively exchanged looks with the other members around me. I'm really sorry about what happened with Daniel. I just had to apologize before you left. I never imagined it would drive you to resign. Likely trying to assert some kind of superiority. Believing I was leaving due to lingering feelings for Daniel. Her triumph was evident in her smile. Convinced of her narrative. What? You're talking about Daniel, Katrina, there's no way Emily is still hung up on him. You're overestimating his importance. It wasn't some grand romance, right, Emily? The senior smirked and said to me, This was clearly a face trying to vent the frustration that had built up over time towards Katrina. Really? So you don't have to quit, right? I want to work more with you, Emily. With a forced smile, she said something she didn't mean, and everyone here probably wanted to put her in her place. Nidging me with her elbow, the senior urged, go on, say it. I would like to keep working, but you know, a lot has happened in a year. What? You still have feelings for him? The words and facial expressions don't match, and Katrina was sure I still had feelings for him. If such a wonderful man asked me to marry him and stay by his side forever, of course I'd follow him. Instantly, her smug expression turned to one of suspicion. What? Marriage? You didn't know Emily is retiring because she's getting married, and he's cool, well-educated, and well-paid. Why did the senior seem more pleased than I was? I nearly laughed managing only a composed smile instead. Katrina, who had been basking in a sense of superiority, now glared at me. Oh, were you matchmaking? Why didn't you tell me? I introduced you someone, but I'm glad for you, Emily. Tell me how you got that guy. She was desperately trying to regain the upper hand, but this topic was a pitfall for her. It was love at first sight at another company's party. He pursued Emily aggressively. No wonder. He's got good taste. 
He's a startup president after all. The words dropped by the senior, as of saying now is the time, seem to be enough to silence Katrina. The comparison between Daniel and the startup president was starkly different. In this setting, there was no one to coddle her or lift her up just because she was young. Until I left, she stood there awkwardly, occasionally giving me resentful glances. And a month after resigning, my partner and I hastily got married, planning to travel abroad a week later for his new job. Going to miss you. Make sure to keep in touch, okay? Let's all get together for drinks when you're back. The senior treated me to lunch as a farewell party. The conversation was no longer about Katrina, but about a very capable employee who had recently joined the company. This young and charming new employee, who is not only skilled, but also has a good personality, quickly overshadowed Katrina, you had been the center of attention until then. It seems things aren't going well with Daniel either, and now she appears to be working somewhat uncomfortably, feeling out of place. Well, it's karma, isn't it? No one in our department feels sorry for her, but we're not abandoning her. So Emily, don't worry and just do your best in your new environment. That's the cool thing about my senior. I am surrounded by wonderful people. Even Katrina serves as a kind of cautionary example among them. I hope she finds a turning point in her life that changes everything for the better. Now, I can sincerely think that way.